So this lesson's potential dividers for A-level physics. And um, we're going to, first of all, be able to identify potential divider circuits and then solve circuit problems that include potential dividers. So first question, I'm going to show you how to do this. It says, calculate the voltage across each resistor in this potential divider circuit. So a potential divider is, is simply a circuit where the voltage is shared. So voltage in a series circuit will share across components. And what we could we could just do the, the way that we've done before, where we just do find the current and then do voltage equals current times resistance for each resistor, which you can do. There's no problem. However, there's another method whereby we could find the voltage across this one and the voltage V2, I'll call this one. So to get voltage one, you would simply do the resistance, which is 10 kilo ohms. So I'll just say 10 kilo ohms, 10K. And then divide by the total resistance. So basically resistor one plus resistor two, which would be 15 kilo ohms. And then you just multiply by the total voltage, which is 12. So it's basically a ratio method. So if you put that in your calculator, that resistor will have eight volts across it or an eight voltage drop. Um, and the next one, we just do the same thing. So our voltage two would be the resistance, which is 5,000 divided by the total, which is 15,000 times it by 12, the supply voltage. And that gives us the other four volts, which makes sense because we've got the eight and the four and they have together to give the supply. So let's give you another, another example question that I want you to have a go at. So I've got this one, use the same method. So this one, voltage one, would be the resistance, 1.75, obviously it's 1,000, divided by the total, which is 4,000, multiplied by the supply, which is 12, which gives us a voltage of 5.25 volts. For the remainder, you could just do the supply 12 subtract 5.25, which will give you the right answer. Or you can simply just do V2 is 2.25 thousand divided by the total, which is 4,000 times 12, which will give the same answer of 6.75 volts. Hopefully that's okay. Let's have a look at the next one. So on this one, I'm going to talk about something called voltage drop. So this is a simplified case as the resistors are all identical. So essentially, we've got 12 volts total. So what we can say is that this line, it has a potential, this is a 12 volt potential line. The bottom one would be zero volts. And then these are all the same resistance. So if there's 12 volts at the top, zero at the bottom, because they've got the same resistance, you'd have a four volt drop on each one. So on this line, if you have a four volt drop from 12, 12 minus four, this is a potential of eight volts. Let's do that again, eight volts. And then on the next resistor, you get another four voltage drop. So eight take away four, that, is a, that line of potential would be four volts. If you use that technique, the rest of this is really easy. So what's the potential difference between A and B? So at A, we've got an eight voltage potential and at B, zero voltage. So between A and B, so A, B, the potential difference is eight volts, eight minus zero. So AC, at line A, we've got eight volts. Line C is four volts. So AC is simply eight take away four, which gives a potential difference of four volts. And then BC, um, C is the potential of four volts. B is zero volts. So the difference between B and C is four minus zero, which again is four volts. That technique's really useful for that. On the next question, you can attempt that yourself if you've not already figured this one out. Let's have a look then. So 
So I want you to have a pause and calculate the potential difference between X and Y. This one's a little bit different because the resistances are different. So on this one, that line is 12 volts. This bottom line is zero volts. What we need to do is figure out what the potentials are at X and Y. So we need to establish the voltage drop across the first resistor. So let's deal with the two ohm resistor on the arm that contains X. So we need to do the potential divider. So we've got the resistance, this voltage we need, the voltage drop, so two, divided by the total on that arm. So two plus one is three. So two thirds times 12, the supply. And that gives us a voltage across the two ohm resistor of eight volts. So if there's 8 volts across this 2 ohm resistor, that means we need to go from the 12 at the top and drop it down 8 volts. So the potential at X is 12 minus 8, which is 4 volts. So that's its potential. Then we need to follow the same process for the to find point Y. So again, we're doing the voltage drop across the 3 ohm resistor. So we've got the resistance, which is 3 ohms, divided by the total on the arm, which is 4 multiplied by the supply voltage of 12. So three quarters of 12 is nine volts. So that means we've got a nine volt drop. So 12, drop the nine volts, 12 minus nine gives us a potential at point Y of three volts. Then the potential difference is really easy. It's just the difference between the potential at X and the potential at Y. So four take away three. So four volts take away three volts gives a potential difference of one volt. Well done if you got that right. If not, I'd advise to just redo the question, to rewind the video a little bit and have another go. And that technique's really important. Let's move on then. So on this one, just to start a question, calculate the total resistance and current in the circuit. Then calculate the potential difference between all of these points, A to C, E to F, A, B, C, D, B, D, B, F, using the technique that we've just learned. So let's do the total resistance first. So we've got the 10 and the 10 in series. So that gives 20 kilo ohms. And we've got the 20 and the 5 kilo ohms in series, which is 25 kilo ohms. So 1 over RT is equal to 1 over 20. Obviously, it's 20,000 plus 1 over 25. If you put that in your calculator, then do the reciprocal, you'll get 11,100 or 11.1 kilo ohms. Then the current is simply V over R, so the maximum voltage or the total voltage, so which is 12 divided by 11,100, and that gives us a current of 1.1 milliamps. Hopefully that went okay, that's pretty straightforward. Let's have a look at the next bit. So the potential at the top, this top row, is 12 volts. And at the bottom, we've got 0 volts. So we just need to find the potential at B and D. Now B is pretty straightforward because these the two 10 kilo ohm resistors are identical. So they'll have the they'll share the voltage exactly. So you'll have six volts on the first resistor and six volts on the second one. So the, the potential drop will be 12 minus six. So the potential at B is six volts. Then for the other arm of the circuit, we're going to do the potential divider. So we need the voltage drop across CD. So that would be the resistance, which is 5,000, divided by the total resistance, 25,000, multiplied by the supply voltage of 12. That gives us a voltage across the resistor of 2.4 volts, which is the voltage drop. So what we need to do is the 12 volts at the top and subtract the 2.4 volts, which gives us a potential at point D of 9.6 volts. Now we've got the potentials. We know A and C are 12. We know that point B is 6. We know point D is 9.6. And we know E and F are 0. So this should be pretty straightforward now. So AC... The first one. So the potential at A is 12. Potential at C 
is 12, so the potential difference is 0. Next one, e to f. So e is 0, f is 0, so the difference is 0 volts. A to B. So A is 12, B is 6, so the potential difference is 6 volts. 12 minus 6. Then we've got CD. Do CD there. So C is 12, and D is 9.6. So 12, 12 minus 9.6 is potential difference of 2.4 volts. B to D. So B is 6, D is 9.6, so we need to do 9.6 minus 6, which is 3.6 volts. And then B to F, well B is 6, F is 0, so B to F is 6 volts. If you got that without any help, well done. Let's move on to the next one. So final question. So when this thermistor is at room temperature and the current in the ammeter is 8 milliamps, calculate the potential difference across the 720 ohm resistor, then calculate the PD across the thermistor, then part 3 we're going to calculate the resistance of the parallel combination of the resistor and thermistor, then the resistance of the thermistor, then what happens if the room gets hotter to the ammeter. So let's have a look at this one. So the first question is calculate the potential difference across the 720 ohm resistor. So question one. So that's pretty straightforward. We just use voltage as current times resistance. So the current that flows through the 720 ohm resistor is 8 milliamps. So 8 times 10 to the minus 3. Multiplied by its resistance to 720 ohms. It gives us a potential difference or voltage of 5.76 volts. The PD across the thermistor then is simply the supply voltage of 12 subtracts the answer, which is 6.24 volts. So we've got 6.24 volts across all of this section, so 6.24 volts. And because that's, that combination is in parallel, that means that the 15 ohm resistor has 6.24 volts across it and the thermistor actually draw a thermistor in there, also a 6.24 volts. So question three, calculate the resistance of the parallel combination. So resistance is equal to voltage over current. We've got the voltage now, 6.24 volts, divided by the current. So the total current that flows through that combination is the eight milliamps, eight times 10 to the minus three. So that gives us a total resistance. 780 ohms. I'm just going to tidy this up. Pop that thermistor back in there. So the next question, number four. We need to calculate the resistance of the thermistor. So one, we need to do 1 over RT is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So 1 over the total resistance. Now the total resistance we just calculated to be 780 ohms is equal to, so 1 over, R, 1 over 1500 plus 1 over the resistance of the thermistor, which I'll just call R. So we need to do 1 over 780, subtract 1 over 1500, and that'll give us 1 over R. So I'll calculate that and then do the reciprocal. And that gives a resistance for the thermistor of 1,625 ohms. And the final one, question five. If the room gets hotter, explain what happens to the ammeter reading. If the room gets hotter, then the resistance across the thermistor will decrease. So resistance across the thermistor will decrease, which means the parallel combination has 
to put parallel combo. Uh, resistance will also decrease. Let's put resistance will decrease. So in terms of the total circuit, if we just look at V equals I times R, if the parallel combination has decreased in its resistance, then the total resistance of the circuit will decrease. However, the supply voltage, the 12 volts, will remain constant. So if the resistance has dropped, then the current must increase. So the, the reading on the ammeter will increase. And that's it. Hopefully that went okay. Thank you.